Hello, this is Katie and this is another one of my essential techniques videos. So have you ever wanted to use a cord for a necklace and then thought, how am I going to attach an end? This is your answer. So today we're going to be making some cord ends. So just like this, they're going to, you we're just going to use some wire. They're going to attach nice and firmly and securely and they have an openable loop on the end so you can attach your clasp or anything you like onto those as well. So you can make them to fit your cord. My cord's a three millimeter cord here. Um, you want your the mandrel that you use to be as close to the size of your cord as possible. Um, don't go too big, you want to be, if anything, on the smaller side and, and just kind of wiggle it in but i'll show you the wiggling it in bit in when we get there so we're going to be using six step bail making pliers or a mandrel you could use um your gizmo coiling your hand coiling tools um things like that as long as you've got a consistent size of coil so if you've got you know the um the coiling tools where you wind and wind and wind you could make a really long piece and then just cut these up and um and use and use them like i'm going to show you how to how to use them so you could make yourself a whole stash in different colors and things so we're going to be i'm for this one i'm going to be using the smallest because it matches up with my um cord you can see there hopefully you can see that and um yeah so you want a mandrel you can't use round nose pliers because they are those are conical we want something that's straight so either your six step bail making pliers or other bail making pliers um if you haven't got any of those tools there is nothing wrong with using um like a crochet hook something that is consistent so if you look at this crochet hook this part is consistent in size obviously this one's a bit chunky for what, what we need but um, yeah, you could use something like that and just wrapping it around absolutely fine. So we're also going to need some chain nose pliers and um, that's it for tools. Oh, yeah, sorry. We will need some flush cutters as well to cut our wire. So the wire that I'm using is a 0.9 millimeter. Now that is a 19 gauge wire in the US terms. You could also use a one millimeter wire. I probably wouldn't go lower because you do want some strength to this. So a 0 0.9, 19 gauge or a one millimeter, which is your 18 gauge. You could go higher if you had like a really chunky design as well, but obviously it would be a bit harder on your hands. We will also be using a little bit of glue as well. Don't ever worry about using glue in your jewelry. Jewelry, professional jewelers use glue all the time. So I use an E6000, uh, which is quite a uh, pliable glue. It has some, some room. It doesn't set rigid, if you know what I mean. It's more like rubbery when it sets. So let's get on and start making. So you will use your wire. I've just cut a length because it's easier for camera. You will use your wire straight from the reel, so you will not waste any of it. Let's just move a few things out of the way. So we're going to start by using the mandrel, the smallest one, the one that I said earlier. We're going to take our wire right to the very tip. doesn't matter where it is on the mandrel at this point. And we're going to start wrapping. So we're just going to wind this mandrel around and we want our wire to come above it. Now the first ring, the first loop always sits a little bit weird. So don't worry, we're going to snip that off in a minute. And we're just going to continue wrapping and we're going upwards and that means we can continue wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. So can you see if I take that off, the first ring is just kind of a little bit bigger than the others and it just doesn't sit as tight. So I'm just going to snip that bottom bit off and pop my mandrel back inside. And then I'm just going to continue wrapping. Now the way I size mine, because I use this mandrel technique with the six step bell making pliers, I go with the length of the mandrel. But once I've wound this, I will tell you exactly what length it is. And then you can, if you're using a different technique, you can measure those up. So I've gone right to the tip of the mandrel. Don't worry for the, that little bit at the bottom. The little bit at the bottom was always a little bit weird. We can just snip that off. That's fine. So just taking a look at that, it's about a centimetre. So about a centimetre of coil. Now what I want to do is just flush cut the end off 
So just flush cut it just where the, the coiling ends, like so. And now what we've got is this little coil. So move those out of the way. So we've got this little coil all nicely um, coiled up. And now we just need to open up one of those rings at the top. Now what you want to do is see where the end is. Let's just zoom a little bit. So we can see where the end of the wire there. We want to go to the opposite side where the end is. So can we see that there, the opposite side? And then what I tend to do is I pop my fingernail in just to begin with, because it's easier than trying to get your pliers in. So we just want to go opposite and just pop your fingernail in just to get that little gap. If you haven't got fingernails, you'll just have to go through with your pliers. So these are my really fine chain nose pliers and I can just grab that ring now and pull it up and I've grabbed it opposite to the end of it so that when I lift it up, I will have a full ring, okay? So that's my little cord end made and that's how you will make them and leave them until you're actually ready to use them. Then you're gonna grab your cord. Now you just want, if you have a cord that frays, you just wanna make sure that your ends are kind of finished. You could pop a little bit of glue on there or something like that and let it go hard. Just make sure you've got fluffy ends and then your cord will go in. And you could just wanna kind of grab it at the top there. But what you can do just before, I nearly forgot to put my glue on. I'm just gonna use a little bit of glue on a cocktail stick. Ooh, not that much glue. I'm gonna to have to put the lid back on that. You know what glue's like, likes to escape. We're just gonna pop that inside and just get a little bit of glue on the inside of there. Okay, just pop that to one side. Now I can pop my cord in. And we just want it to come, just so we can just see the very tip of it at the top there. And you want to wind it around until you can see the end of your coil. Okay. You just want to find it so you can see the end of your coil. Hold it if you can, and if you can't, just kind of level it all up, just make sure nothing's moving. And what we want to do is that very last coil, we just want to crush it against the cord, just that very last one. So we're nipping it in here, use it, using that very last piece of, of wire to nip that in, nice and gently. So we've nipped it in at the bottom there, but we've also got that glue in there holding that. And there we go. We have two cord ends ready to add your pendant or whatever you like. Make sure if you are adding, adding a pendant that has a bail and if it's smaller than this, you need to add it before you put um, the cord end on, but you can add your class for that. I'll give that a good 24 hours to make sure the glue is totally dry. But there you go, that is how to add cord ends, homemade, handmade, cord ends matching your work so if you use that same color wire on a maybe a wire pendant design you can have everything matching including your cord ends because in previous times i've had to like buy pre-made ones and they never quite match so it's nice to be able to to make your own so they actually match so thank you very much for watching take care don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already click that bell select all and you will never miss a video i've got lots and lots coming up and i will see you again really soon thanks